Welcome ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. J and this is the third episode of my series How to Complete Hollow Knight. Last time we explored part of the green pet area, got our first spell as well as our first movement ability. We were also introduced to quite a few new characters. Let's see where the road will take us today. So now let's make a quick detour to the left to explore a bit. From now on we will be spamming the dash ability as much as possible. Again with this acid bat. Jeez. Easy there, big guy. Hey, Quirrell. What's up, my dude? Now let's backtrack for a while in order to get the next charm with our new ability. Unfortunately this is another section where I wish there was some kind of faster movement in this game. Even though the route I am demonstrating is very much optimized, there are still times like this where you're just spending minutes walking from one place to another. Again, this would be greatly alleviated in the latter part of the game, but right now it feels kind of like a slog. Though on the other hand, it gives us the opportunity to enjoy the wonderful artwork of the game. So I guess it's really a matter of perception. Okay, so here is a platforming challenge that rewards you with the absolutely named charm Thorns of Agony. Get used to those, they will only get harder as the game progresses. Thorns of Agony sprouts thorns whenever you're hit. It freezes the knight in place for a bit, so use it with care. Frankly, by itself, I don't think it's a particularly useful charm, though with certain combinations it could be very effective. Using it with either Bowder Shell or Carefree Melody activates the thorns even if you don't take damage due to those charm's effects, and the Star Wars Shell makes the charm overall more effective due to faster activation time and more iframes. Personally, I don't use it, but again, as is the case with pretty much all charms, it's all down to personal preference. Now we'll move on to a new area, the Fog Canyon. Thank 
The plant on the ceiling is called Gulka. It shoots slowly moving homing projectiles at you. They are not particularly difficult to dodge. If you want to kill the Gulka, however, you have to time your attacks around the time it shoots the bow, since it will retract and become invulnerable if you get close to it. And now we are finally in Fog Canyon. The most common enemies here are the Uoma and Tooma. They are both jellyfish. The small ones can hurt you only if you bump into them. The larger ones, however, are significantly more dangerous. Both don't attack you actively, however, if you kill the larger ones, it will leave a past moving homing projectile that has a large AOE explosion that takes a whopping 2 masks of damage if it hits you. Just for future reference, the Oma do not respawn at room transition. After our quick trek through Fog Canyon, we've reached Queen's Station. Chat a bit with Quirrell and activate this tech station. So this is Willow, a pretty inconsequential NPC that we'd want to come back and check up on her food source when we get the double jump ability. Now let's check if there's anything interesting going on back in Dirtmouth. I like the fact that pretty much everything in this game is a collectible of some kind. Even just opening fast travel points will get you a reward in the end. That's very good for my OCD. Slight has several very useful items, though we will need to gather some more jewel in order to afford them. After baiting in Zolt's glory, it's time to continue our journey. The sparkling thing on the right is a mask shard. We need four of them in order to gain a mask. It will be a while before we get to this particular shard, so let's just go find Cornifer for now. The Fungoon is not particularly challenging, though you have to be careful of his breath attack since it has quite a reach.
The Thunglings on the other hand are similar to the small jellyfish in that they don't try to actively attack you and just float around. And here's Cornifer. As usual, listen to what he has to say about the area and buy a map from him. Now let's continue exploring the fungal wastes. The fungified husks is like an upgraded version of the volatile moss skin. Same tactic applies. Climb this cave and you'll be rewarded with the hollow nest seal. Next, it's time to get our first additional charm notch. The young blooms, similarly to the crawlits, simply walk around and can hurt you unless you bump into them. The shroomo warriors are somewhat annoying since they're quite fast and can either roll on the ground or jump at you. They also leave a trail of the infection, so you can't simply jump over them and attack them from behind. Like I said, annoying. Activate the lever to open the shortcut and continue climbing. Guarding the charm notch are two shroomo loggers. One on one, they are actually very easy to defeat. In this case you have to be somewhat careful. They have two attacks. One is smashing their head in front of them and slowly walking towards you and the other is spewing corrosive liquid which remains on the ground for a while. Neither attack is too difficult to dodge. Once you defeat them, a charm notch will fall from the ceiling. Continue to the right. Oops, almost took another acid bath. Here we meet Klopt, a formidable warrior that's wandering Hollow Nest. 
Despite her bravado, she is not that confident in her skills and she constantly strives to prove her mettle. Poco jumping on those plants will bounce you much higher than you might think. We are now going for another grub rescue. The fungi wastes are the home of two very different species of bugs. The mushroom clan is a type of hive mind species that were in conflict with the creatures from the deep nest. They accepted the rule of the pale king, hoping he would protect them. The mantis tribe, on the other hand, are proudful warriors that would not bow down to the kingdom of Hollow Nest. They did agree to a truce, however, and in exchange for attaining their sovereignty, they would act as a shield against the creatures from Deep Nest. Now I know how a pinball machine bow feels like. And here is group number 8 released. Moving on to open another shortcut and after that our next goal is the Mantis Village. The Mantis Warrior only uses melee attacks, so again, pogo jumping is your best friend. Though tanking his attacks and continuously slashing is also a viable strategy. The Mantis Youth I find actually more annoying than the Warriors, simply because they are a flying enemy. Similarly to the Warriors, they only have a melee attack, which is quite short. As you can see, unlike the Mushroom Clan, the Mantis Tribe were not affected by the infection. I believe this to be because of their strong pride and the fact that they had very little contact with the Kingdom of Hollow Nest. Their tradition compels them to attack any intruder in their territory. However, they respect strength and if you prove yourself to them, they will honor you. A quick rest on the bench and we are ready to enter the Mantis Village proper. Rooms like this hint to the importance of the fungal waste to the Hollow Nest Kingdom. The Pilgrim's Way that connects the Forgotten Crossroads to the City of Tears passes through these caverns. Also, the Queen Station in the west part of the area connects the fungal waste and the Fog Canyon to the Stack Network, making it an important hub to travelers. I really bungled this fight, it's not nearly as difficult as I made it seem.
As we are now entering the Mantis village, I would like to talk a bit more about them. They are led by the Mantis Lords and, as I've said previously, they value strength above all else. Though as a whole they've not succumbed to the infection, they are not immune to it, merely resistant. Those that are infected are exiled from the village. Some of the Mantis tribe willingly accept the infection, but I will talk more about them when we encounter them later on. There are many areas in the Mantis village we still don't have the abilities to explore, but we'll be coming back to them later. Obviously I shouldn't have dropped down here. And finally we get the Mantis Claw ability, which allows us to jump off of walls. An incredibly useful ability. Hey guys, now that we have the Mantis Claws we can finally reach the City of Tears and visit the capital of the Hollow Nest Kingdom. What kind of wonders await us there? Find out in the next episode. As always, if you've enjoyed it, please press the like button and if you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you. This will really help me to provide better content for you guys. Hope to see you again next time and until then, have a good one.